Hey everyone, and welcome to week one of Art Starts Explorers Contrast. And so uh, this week we're going to try out uh, a couple of different things as we explore contrast. And if you haven't watched the intro uh, introduction video, um, contrast is basically an exploration of, um, of opposites. And so um, what's really cool about contrast is that you can go in so many different directions um, when it comes to opposites because anything can be an opposite. Um, and in art making, that could be from color to texture to materials to uh, different, different, the different hands that you use, um, some different ideas. In writing, you can pick uh, writing about one thing um, and then writing about something different so that you can compare and you can contrast them. You can have those opposites and they can work um, to build tension between each other. So contrast is this really, really big thing that we get to explore. And I'm really excited to um, end the year 2020 with you exploring uh, contrast. And so for week one, um, I'm going to ask, do you have um, some paper? And I grabbed some paper from the recycling bin. I've got a whole bunch of stuff that has been drawn on and already has been printed on. Um, I even had some recycling from uh, previous explorers. So a whole bunch of paper that I found from the recycling bin. Uh, some colored mark making tools. And so by mark making tools, that's anything that makes a mark. So this week I've got some crayons here. Uh, I found some markers. Um, if you've got pastels, if you've just, if you've got pencils, that's great. Markers, pens, whatever makes a mark is great. Uh, don't forget if you're using scented markers that you want to check, you want to practice your spec uh, by asking other people who are making with you um, if they are okay if you use the smelly markers because uh, there are people who have scent sensitivities and they might get a headache if you uh, are using those in the same space. And then down here I said optional and optional means if you have them available. And so if where you're making you have access to some glue um, or some scissors, that's great. But you don't have to have either of those things to make along with me today. Um, because remember, nothing is for keeps. So you don't have to glue anything down because we're gonna, we're gonna unmake it all at the end of the day. And uh, if you don't have scissors, that's okay. You can always rip paper, which is one of my favorite things to do. Okay, so let's start looking at contrast. Okay, so I said the contrast was an exploration of, of opposites. And so um, I thought we could start looking at um, opposites by uh, starting to build some backgrounds. And so um, the way that I, I want to kind of explore opposites and backgrounds is that um, if we make things in the background, if we texture, we create something um, in a background, something that's really active and has a lot of energy, and then we, uh, we add an object that we want people to pay attention to, then what we can do is we can try and create a contrast between um, our backgrounds and the thing we want people to focus on um, and see what works and what doesn't. So this is a nice way to warm up, uh, just trying to explore a new idea, especially if you have never done contrast or you're waking up and feel a little groggy and you just want to kind of exercise your hands. And so let's start by just picking up any tool. First tool that you pick up is great. What I want you to do is I want you to practice your gesture by just putting a bunch of marks on a page. However you decide to put the marks on the page is right. And let's fill up as much of the page as we can. You don't have to use both hands. Maybe you're using your elbow. Maybe you're just using one mark making tool. And that's great. I think I want one more color in there. 
I think I want purple. No, I want mustard. Is this mustard? It says goldenrod. Yeah, I like this color. And add that in there. Yeah, this is what I want. And you can fill up the whole page. I encourage you to do that. But if you just want to fill up the, sec uh, the section in the middle, that's great. And if you're using a piece of paper that already had some other things on it, you could, you could just color around it or you could use, if there was a printed word, you could just color over top of it, right? Nothing is for keeps. Okay, so there's my background. So before we can build our opposite or build the contrast, we gotta look at what we can see here. We gotta figure out what's on our background. And so what do I see? Well, I see scribbles, which I really like. I see kind of some energy. When I look at this, this doesn't look boring to me. This looks fun and energetic as if maybe some bright lights or music is playing in the background. Um, I don't see a lot of white space in here. So it could be daytime or nighttime. Uh, what else do I see? What if, what if I turn it around? I kind of see some circles, but mostly I see sharp lines. I don't see a lot of points though. Even though I was scribbling, I've got a lot of curved lines throughout here. Okay. What did you see on your page? Your scribbles and your background is going to look different than mine. So you might have seen or noticed some things that are, uh, that are completely different. Maybe you do have sharp points. Um, maybe you just used a pencil and so you have gray. So once you've identified a whole bunch of things and looked at your page and figured out the things that are there, Start thinking about the opposites of what isn't there. So I have this pink, yellow, and blue. So if I was to think about red or black, yeah, that's definitely in contrast. None of these colors are on that page. Look, I don't even have to draw. I could just take the mark making tool and place it on top. That looks really different, right? And that's, that's the big part of contrast is that you can't ignore the thing that you are adding to your art space. It's hard to ignore and therefore it's got some good contrast from the thing behind it. Let me give you another example. If I was to take my background, See, who needs scissors when you've got paper clip? I'm gonna put that back together. Because my background is so wild, you can't really tell where I took this apart. And so I took this piece off and I'm gonna place it in the middle here. But it's kind of hard to see, isn't it? Even though it's a separate piece, even though this ready-made is ready to go and I can add it to my artwork here, it's not really adding any contrast because there's so much the same with it going on in the background. However, I know for a fact that there was nothing on the back of my paper. So remember how I said there wasn't a lot of white in the space here, even though it was on a white piece of paper? All right. It's not as highly contrasted though, is it? If you were doing this and you ripped out a piece of paper and then you grabbed one of the objects or um, mark making tools that I said uh, you should check out that is different from what you have on your page, put it back beside each other. What do you notice? I feel like because there's still, it was still a white page. And even though I tried to scribble it really dense so that you really couldn't see any of the white, there's still white behind all of these marks. And so even though this is different, it's not different enough. It doesn't have enough contrast. Whereas this right here, this isn't in here at all. It's not the background. It's none of the marks that I made. And so it's got really good contrast. Okay, well, I've already got this ready-made, ready to go that I ripped off of the page. So 
I'm going to take another piece of paper just so I don't color onto my artboard, even though I've done that a lot of times before, but we want to respect the space uh, that we're making in. And I'm going to color. I'm going to color this new piece. And if you didn't want to rip up your background to just pull another piece off, you could just take another piece of paper out of your uh, the recycling bin and go from there. Oh, I have just made some more contrast here. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really emphasize this by going all around, making sure I've colored all the parts here. Okay, remember how I said that this had white originally on it and then I picked up a white piece of paper. Are you ready? Check it out. So even just by using this page to, um, to protect my surface, I got to try a different kind of contrast where I, I did an outline and you really can see the, the, um, the opposite, right? Of where there was color and where there isn't. This is called negative space. Um, this is positive space because I added some um, color to the space. But this is negative space because there's, no, there's nothing in there. And check out, right? If you were to keep going and color in the rest of this page, Love it when we get to uh, explore and uh, find things out without even planning it. Because remember, when I make along with you every week, um, I don't have a lot of plans either. I just want to explore contrast with you. I don't have a lesson um, or a specific thing in mind that we're going to do other than uh, maybe one or two ideas. And then I get to explore and discover at the same time as you. And you're going to discover things that, uh, that I don't discover because your making space is completely different than mine. And that's really exciting. All right. Look at that. Right? So that, even, just that piece of trying this one thing, I came up with this whole new thing here where it's now the opposite of that white space um, and, that, and that red space. And I'm going to keep that because that can become a background too, right? I'm going to leave that off to the side. A cool accidental mark that I had here makes it even, even though it's the, it started out the same, it's just a little, little different because that mark making comes up there. Okay, I'm going to take my ready-made. I'm going to bring it onto my wild activated space over here. Oh yeah, you can't ignore that space, right? You can't ignore that piece. It's nowhere on the space, so you, you, your eye is drawn here. But it still looks fun, right? Because this, this is all a solid piece, right? It's solid, it's one color here. Whereas the background is a whole bunch of wild colors. Because we already, we did this one over here where it's got these two solids right now. Why don't we take one of the pieces from this original drawing that we had here and bring it over here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take even more of the white space out so that I can isolate it and really just get all the, um, the active marks. And I'm gonna bring it over to this space. Check it out. What do you notice? I notice that even though this is a white solid space, still again, because this paper started as white paper, when I put it on top of the white paper, there isn't as much contrast between this section and this section as there is between this section and this section. Well, let's keep going. What other colors? I think I said black, but I think I, think I wanna go with blue because even though we had blue or I had blue in this section, I had kind of a lighter blue. And so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take a darker blue this time. You know what, I'm not even gonna do a marker because I've already got markers there. I want us to uh, build a background with some different colors, but using um, a different material. So I'm gonna bring this piece back over here again, and I'm gonna color in this space. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna go pretty quick. This is why I love to rip paper. You get so many cool shapes, things that you weren't even expecting. If you want to practice doing um, 
really sharp and clear, clear shapes, then using, uh, using scissors is great. Um, but if you want to kind of surprise yourself, ripping paper uh, really can cause you to uh, get some surprise shapes. All right. Now, before we even add that, check out the difference between that, right? So this one I used crayon and this one I used marker. And I, I, I colored it in, in in very similar gestures by going back and forth. But this looks very different. You can't, you can't ignore this piece here, even when it was white, right? It's so different from this red here. All right, let's bring in something different again. Oh yeah, that's really different. I can't ignore any of those pieces. And that's a good way of practicing contrast is, um, could you, can you ignore it? If it's easy to ignore something that you want people to pay attention to, then it's then it then you can say, well, I need more contrast. And then you need to practice adding either more things to the background or other ways so that the new item that you have added to your page um, is uh, is easy to make out that you can tell what it is. I said that if I had some uh, if you had some glue laying around, you could use that. And so I think I am going to glue this down. I'm still gonna throw this out when I'm all finished because it's all just recycled paper. I think I wanna glue it down. All right. I mean, I could keep adding to this background with different colors and different shapes. I could make my own ready-mades out of it, right? It doesn't, doesn't just have to be that one. I could choose all new colors now. If I had different materials, uh, maybe I've got um, some paint, or uh, last time we made last month, I was talking about pudding, using pudding to draw with. Maybe you've got some charcoal. Maybe you've got a Sharpie. So this time, remember how I said I didn't have any sharp lines in the previous one? This one, I'm trying to do really sharp lines. I'm always trying to practice opposites. What didn't I do last time? I'm going to add one more. fill in all the white spaces so you really can't see any white on the page here. I'm also coloring this one a lot harder than I did the last time. Okay, so remember how I said I had um, I had ripped the page before? Actually, we've got this ready-made here. Put it on there. All right, so can you see even though this red that I used, I think, oh no, I used this red. Even though this red that I used is different from this red, because there's some red in this in this mark or in this um, pencil or this <laughs> in this crayon here, it makes it so that there isn't as much of a contrast between these colors or this shape and this background as there was between that one. And so, if you really want to have a lot of contrast, if you want to make your object top, then trying to use things, um, trying to use colors that weren't in the original or in your background is a really good way of making something stand out. So for this object, if this was the object that I wanted you to pay attention to um, in a drawing or a painting or whatever we were, uh, we were making, I would want to, I wouldn't want to use something that didn't have this color. But if I wanted it to kind of blend in maybe uh, trees in the background, or maybe I want some contrast, but not a lot of contrast because it's not the thing that I want you to focus on. The thing that I actually want you to focus on is maybe uh, a person standing in front of everything. Let me go ahead and color this in. And there's no black anywhere in my drawing so far. And you're really paying attention to that, to that um, figure there, because it's not, it's the color isn't anywhere there. It's completely different color. It's all the colors actually, right? Because it's black, right? Um, and so 
if I really wanted to add emphasis, right, if I really wanted you to pay attention to that one character, um, using a contrasting color is a good way to, for you to pay attention to that. Okay, but I wanted to use this one on this page here. So I want to do one more opposite uh, for this background here. And remember how I said, so this one was a rip page that we colored around. And this was a rip page um, that was just ripped out of a page that I had already colored on. Well, this one, I want to do something different. I've got kind of this wedge shape going on here. And so that one, I'm not going to do opposite. I'm going to try and do a wedge again, but I'm going to cut it this time because that's an opposite. Right now, the texture of the edge is different again. All right. So what do you notice? I feel like I, I feel like I may have actually duplicated. I may have used this one in the original drawing for mine. And so that's why I think this one doesn't quite have as much contrast. And remember how we were noticing with the red on this piece? This doesn't have the same contrast here in the color. And so it's easy for it to kind of blend into the background. I don't think I did a, I did a good job for this one. I don't think this is as contrasted as it could be. I wonder if I can pull this up even though I put the glue on it. Oh yeah, that's great. Okay, so I'm gonna take this really good contrast piece because this one, this one has been my best contrast so far. And I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna put it down here and go, okay, it's all right. I'm gonna glue it on this shape here because there's some contrast and there's better contrast here. But there was blue in this, right? The, the bluey purple that I used and there was red in this. So it's not really a, it's not really a strong contrast. So I'm gonna glue it down, make it part of my background. And then I'm gonna take the piece that was really good, I'm gonna put it back on top again. Check it out. So all of a sudden that piece that I really wanted to include, I wanted to add that extra texture, I wanted to add those, those lines that were different, but it didn't work on top, but it works fine underneath. And that's one of the cool things about not gluing things down until you've tried a whole bunch of things, because you might learn something. You might want to move things around as you're making. And here we go. I'm going to glue that down. There we go. Oh yeah. That's some great contrast. And you know what? I really like this as a background. I could keep drawing. I could add other shapes on top of it. Um, I could bring in some of these other pieces. And then I could add another uh, character. Oh, there we go, up on top. Uh, just rip that off now, and there you go. You really can't ignore that character there. So even though there's those red, that red there, right? This one is so different from all the rest of this background that your eyes are drawn right to that figure. What other backgrounds could you make? What other materials could you use? Keep exploring background building. And if you want to share what you made today, I really encourage you to uh, get permission uh, if you're a young person before posting anything, but share it with us in, in the comments or send us uh, an email and we'd love to see how your backgrounds are turning out. Okay, I'm gonna leave my video running just a little bit. I might try another activity today, but I'm all done with background building. And so one of the ways we practice respect is we always make sure that we are cleaning up everything when we are all finished um, so that we can be ready to make again for the next activity.